so I, I've just uh, kind of finished this animation now with uh, a couple of more special effects to that. Uh, it's now dodging the bullet or, or dodging the meteor basically. There's a whole uh, set of uh, meteors flying out of this explosion, explosion area. We're also moving the camera later on. We're doing a sort of a transform of the entire scene. And then we, uh, we also add a, uh, a lens flare in the upper right corner that has a sort of bluish light, uh, a star that's perhaps you know, from a binary star system and only one of them is the explosion, the red giant. Um, the blue star is there because the lighting on the spaceship was such that the, there seems to be some light hitting it from the upper right corner. So it's, it makes sense to also have some sort of a, a bluish light up there. But uh, let me focus on another aspect of this uh, particular animation. Right now, um, I actually have a, a lot of things I'm showing. You see the, the spaceship is disappearing behind the meteor, and that's because I, I rendered this final meteor um, after the, the spaceship was rendered. So, so I composited or I, I, I placed the spaceship along a path with the brush keyframer. But uh, the meteor was rendered also with the brush keyframer a little bit later. However, before that, there's also a lot of meteors. You see them uh, barely there. They're kind of coming out from the explosion area. And then some of them seem to be casting shadows. Here, let me zoom in a little bit. Again, you do that with the uh, control and the shift key down, right button dragging sideways. Up and down won't do much. It's sideways here, out of the wrist. And then with the left button, you can zoom around. So, but what you can see is that as you're scrubbing through the animation, there's a lot of meteors. There's another one. There's probably a, you know, a dozen or 20 of them. And some of them are small, but they get bigger as they fly closer to, to, uh, to the viewer. There's even one kind of going across here and glowing still. Uh, there's also some ghosting or some uh, frame blending because I reduced the frame count to 180 eventually here. There's also some lighting, lightning effect here every once in a while. Oh, there is one, there it is. So you see uh, a lot of dramatic stuff happening. And, you know, obviously some of it will not be recognized uh, fully at the time when it's actually playing back at 30 frames a second. But, uh, you know, add some dramatic uh, audio, some, some, some drumbeat music to that, and it's going to be a pretty hectic uh, chase. Um, what we want to do, what I want to do here in this tutorial is really show you the technique I used for these meteors because that's yet another way by which you can paint an animated brush uh, or even a static brush, a uh, custom brush, going uh, across the, uh, the screen of an animation and, um, and perhaps change also some other aspects to it. So, so here's what I did. Let me, let me first load the animation that I started from. I think it was uh, one that I did save as an AVI, so let me go and load the AVI now. Um, probably the 180. Let's try this one, layer 6. I don't know. Yeah, it's probably that one. Let's scrub through it. No, we already have the meteors here. Okay, I need to have one. With, well, you know what? Actually, it doesn't matter. We can, we can use this one and just add more, add a few more meteors. So you have this animation, right? You have some animation. Maybe there are some meteors, maybe not. Let's just show how to draw one more or a few, a bunch, right? So, so I mean, if you have a regular brush, um, you might imagine, for instance, doing something like the following. Let me go to the brush keyframer, um, or, or actually, you know, just the regular brushes here, and say if you had a simple or an airbrush, a fairly large one, perhaps like that, you're painting from left to right uh, to give the basic path. Uh, in fact, you know, why do this with this? Let's just go with the brush that represents the meteor. I have it here, uh, but what the way I actually grabbed it was I had stored it earlier, so let's just go back to my anim brushes. Um, oh, you, by the way, when you double click this, uh, you can go or not double click, but when you click and then click again, you can change the names of these right here. Uh, anyway, so that's a little side effect that I just noticed. But uh, the, uh, my anim brush, there is a Dartenbeck spaceship here. Um, there is a spinning astronaut. I rendered in Carrara. Uh, where's my, there, there's my spinning meteor. And when you paint that, uh, one thing you may not notice, there is one frame perhaps that may be transparent or not, not properly, um, keyframe or not properly masked for the transparency uh, let's uh, do the following here I'm going to actually right click on the brush selector so I can reframe rekey it see the first frame it's empty I don't know why 
uh, I must have uh, messed it up. And so I'm going to keyframe. I'm going to uh, to key on the back background. I know there's a black background behind it, so I'm going to um, to do just that here. I'm going to try to subtly get something like this. There you go. So that's close enough. Even if there's a little bit of transparency, it doesn't matter. What you do want to do is, you know, have something like this. And, and then it's affecting all of the brushes the same, all, all of the frames the same way. And then you go and store it, store it and manage a copy of it. And because this was just, this was an animated brush already. If you show the film strip, you'll see them. And they may have slightly different hues. I think this is what happened is that I had done some uh, keyframing on that with the timeline. I had changed the, uh, the hue of these brushes. So some of them got a little bit more transparency than others. Some of them got uh, a slightly different hue. In the, in the picture of this chaotic scene, it's not going to matter. It's going to be so uh, undetectable in the end. So what we'll do is we'll use this. And uh, as we're painting, what we want to do is have it change the size uh, fairly easily. I want it to go small here and then bigger as it go to the right side. Um, so how do we do that? Well, the, if you have it, if you have a, uh, a, a tablet, that's fine. You can just apply more pressure as you go to the back side, uh, very lightly first, and then press harder towards the right, and it will change the size. But I don't have a tablet at the moment, and what I want to show a technique that you can use if you don't have a tablet, and you still want this, the uh, size of the brush to change as you go from this area to the, ren to the end of the path um, for that meteor. So let's go to the settings here. And in the settings, let's pin it down because we might need to stay with this a little bit. Um, with the settings, there is a parameter called uh, speed scale. By default, it's zero, meaning it does not change the, sc uh, the scale or the size based on the speed. But when you click this, you can either go one way or the other. And what that does is, let's say if I'm trying the right side, it means that it's going bigger when I'm going slower or the other way around. No, it's going sm smaller when I'm going faster. Yeah, so if I'm going slowing down, there you go, it, go, it goes bigger. That's actually not what I want in this case. Although, by the way, this is an interesting looking uh, uh, creature there. Uh, one thing I wanted to do though is to have the speed scale go the other way around, right? Maybe 15 or something like that. So when I'm starting small, uh, when I'm going slow, it's a small and as I go faster, it gets bigger. Now it's a bit choppy here because uh, depending on the surface that you have your mouse on, it might not be a very linear experience. So play with this a little bit, uh, both with the step distance and but particularly with the speed scale, give it something like minus 20 and see where it starts. And if you can, if you can manage to go faster and faster, yep, there you go. So you see slow, 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 and then go gradually faster. Now the first, uh, when you click down initially, it's it's not going to know that you're going slow, so it's going to show it at big size. You know what? That's okay. We'll we'll probably have a frame or two that uh, at the beginning and maybe at the end, or even somewhere in between. There's going to be a frame where it's going to be messed up, and um, especially if we start the the path of a meteor somewhere halfway, right? Because they're not all starting from uh, at the same point at the same time on the first frame. But let's say we do this. Okay, we do slow and then go faster. There you go. Now what we'd like to do is actually have this thing split across the entire frame sequence or a range of frames, right? We don't want it on this just one frame. We want it to move gradually. Now we could have actually done this with the Alt key down because we have an animator brush. We can do this manually with the Alt key. Press and hold the Alt key and then start drawing slowly and go faster, right? I'm not sure if that's going to do it all, but that's that's one technique. You might want to have the, um, let's see, the, this one here, the S, apply smoothing to the point as motion, just in case your mouse motion is a little bit too choppy. And, and then you can do another one. You can go halfway here, already into it, and do another one that's perhaps gonna go down more to the right side. This, let me uh, also scale this down a little bit with the Control Shift key and the right button. Uh, scale it down so that I have a little bit more leeway on my, and I can get to it a little bit faster without having to move my mouse too much. But you want to do this uh, conveniently out of the wrist and, you know, practice it so you can say, yeah, I have full, nothing is going to hold my hand or, or, or stop my movement. And now I can go and do something like this, slowly, slowly, and then faster, boom. And then do another one, slowly, slowly, and faster. 
So you are actually able to do a bunch of these and starting at any time along the time frame timeline here, do a bunch of these pretty quickly, pretty conveniently here. Okay, so that's one, one technique that I want to show you. There's another one too. And uh, that other technique still uses the same uh, trick with the uh, scale, uh, speed scale. But uh, in fact, let's go all the way here to the maximum possible. Let's make sure the size of the meteor is going to go, uh, allowing to, to go to the max as well. So it's going to reach about this size at top. But one thing I want to do is say, if I'm, if I'm practicing the path and I want to see if the path is good, uh, one thing I'll do is I won't use the Alt key. I'll just start drawing and then go, whoa. And then I say, no, that's not good. Let's go undo that, right? And then try again, slowly, faster, faster, faster. And uh, that's already too big. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's too sensitive now with the speed scale, maybe uh, something like this, 14. Um, then also perhaps the size is just going to go too fast, too big. Um, let's go and try again. Okay, that's a good one. I like this one. So how do I replay that now? I didn't use the Alt key. I didn't get to play it right into the frame sequence. I can undo, but how do I replay this most recent brush stroke? Well, Dog Waffler remembers your most recent brush stroke. That brush stroke, it can replay in a couple of ways. A couple of ways. One is you can just do a Shift A, and that will just replay it. Now, uh, if we don't want that, we want it to be replayed across the whole frame sequence. So what you can do is go to the animation and look for the stroke player, right? The stroke player will replay your most recent brush strokes. Now you can, by default, that's what it does. It's on the current uh, frame. So replay and there it is. And it still finds that, you know, at, at what speed you went. And, and in fact, here is interesting because you can now change the effect of the speed scale and uh, replay it and see if that's better, right? Now that's going too big too quickly. So maybe you'll say, let's go less than, you know, less speed scale and replay. That's a little bit smaller. Maybe you like that better. So experiment with that. You can also add some random position. Uh, although for a, 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 a Trabant or like a, a Meteor like this, that may not be the right uh, option here. But you can do some, uh, some other things with that. You could have the angle change also. Uh, make sure that since it's a custom brush, make sure you allow custom brush transforms. And uh, so there is, there's a number of, and the fact you do that too here, right there. Um, so you can, you can change with the, you can play with these parameters a little bit until you say, yep, that's the way I would like it. Okay. So let's undo what we did here temporarily. And again, last look here, this is what it's going to look like. Never mind this initial one. That's a big one. That's going to stay. We will just have to delete that first frame at the very end once we're done with all these flying debris. So now what we'll do is we'll say, let's spread this across all frames. Or maybe even just that sequence of a range of frames, right? Maybe I want this from frame 50 to frame 150. I need to know how many frames I have in all. Yep, that's in range. I can go there and then replay that. So it's playing that sequence just into that particular range. Or if you want to have it uh, across all frames, that's an easy one to do here as well. But let's do that a few times on different, um, different uh, in different uh, directions. So we have one here, like that. You know what? I don't like the. Uh, let's click the brush here again. I don't like the size. I need to have a little bit more scale uh, dependent size change here. So let's go a little bit more like this. So it stays small at first. There you go, that's a little bit better. Um, there's also some rotation to it though, so you know, it's don't worry about it being too perfect. Okay, let's do this, undo that, and then replay over all frames. Right, and then so that's how you get to do a lot of these very quickly. And now I'm on the last frame, even though the, this marker here doesn't show it, I'm actually stopped at the last frame, that's okay. But remember that if, I, if I'm going to do another one quickly here, Yep, like that. It means that I'm leaving a trail here on the last frame too. And um, I, I will probably have to delete the first and the last frame with all this temporary stuff there, unless I undo it. And even then the first one will probably have to remove because that ini initial one on mouse down is going to be bigger. Anyway, let's replay one more time here and uh, do a few more. Let's do a whole bunch of these. So we have, yum, 
replay. We don't even have to delete or undo this most recent one. If you want to do this really quickly, uh, just do it like this and replay. And eventually it'll be a mess. I mean, you'll have a whole bunch of these. But uh, the last one, see how it's just showing you here all of these? That's okay. We'll, we'll just uh, delete that last frame at the very end. What you want to do is have fun doing this really quickly and experimenting with it and you know erasing it all if it's not good after all <laughs> but also save often right so you do this uh, when, when you have something that so far you say I like this you know scrub through it to see it yeah that's good uh, I, I, I want to do that but one thing to notice by the way also is you see how it's kind of flickering now that's something to be aware of when you use this technique with the stroke player it's not gonna render it in every single frame it only has so many strokes, so many um, you know places where it's going to stroke it down or uh, pin it down, uh, and you now perhaps you have uh, 50 positions you went across, but you're spreading it over 130 or 180, 178 frames uh, in this case. So that means there's going to be a couple of blanks, and that of course is introducing some flickering. Um, so that this technique will be useful if you have short paths you're going to render it uh, in something like a range. Or if you don't care about the flicker, you know, if the whole thing is like flashing and you're adding some stroboscopic uh, explosions and lens flares on top and maybe doing some um, some motion blurring, um, some ghosting and, and other things, you may not notice it anymore and it may just add to the drama. But uh, so let's do this one here. This one will do from frame uh, 10 to frame, uh, let's say 40, and most likely we will have plenty enough of uh, particles uh, of, of images to go through. In fact, you know what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually draw it going sideways. This is one that already collided with another one and then has changed course, something like this, right? And then replay that. And so now we have that one going just around here. There's another one that I drew earlier. Where did it go this time? It's in the range from 10 to 40. I don't know. Uh, they're hiding. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's do. I don't know. Maybe the the range thing is not working. I'm gonna go to all frames and try one like this and replay that. There you go. There's a whole messy scenario going out here. All right. So so that's that's kind of the technique that I, I wanted to. To show you is that you can use the stroke player not always but in this case uh, quite usable or you use the alt key press and hold the alt key down and as you paint it's going now that one is going to have every frame in it and um, so that one's not going to show the flicker unless there is a frame missing in the brush itself but uh, the nice thing with that you get you also get to choose the step distance here and if you make it uh, a little bit smaller you'll have more of these uh, going slowly so you can also change the speed that way right so you can let's say you're doing a couple of small ones and you make them go slowly so you you reduce the step distance the minimal distance by which the mouse has to move before it's time it decides it's time to paint another one so you can have just a, a, a myriad of sets of my uh, meteors going out here just holding the alt key here as I'm pa painting down and then you go up maybe one or two notches here and increase the size. These are a little bit bigger and they come in a slightly different direction. Then you have them, uh, some of them go really big and, and fast. So, so you need a big, a higher step distance like this, maybe uh, eight or nine. Uh, and you can take the meteor here and actually make it bigger there too. That's gonna be a massive meteor. That's gonna be uh, one that, to avoid. That's the one that we'll need to avoid with the, you know, with the, um, brush keyframer when we have the spaceship go around or this is just one we cannot avoid right we're going to collide <laughs> so here i'm just drawing with the brush keyframer i mean with the the manual with the alt key down and you see the whole thing is like continuing uh wherever the the last frame is when i let go it stays on that and i keep going and so now it's time to clean it up all right, so we have a couple of places where we have some trails that were experimental or that were tests that we didn't do an undo. For instance, the first frame. And there's going to be a lot of big ones here. Let me turn the preview off of the brush. There's going to be a lot of uh, big ones around here too. So this frame will delete. That's a sacrifice we give it here. Then we have a few others somewhere. 
Uh, for instance, uh, a bunch of times we have some big stuff happening here, and we might want to delete that if it's too obvious. But in the same token, you know, there's going to be probably an additional lens flare placed on top of it, so it may not really matter so much. One I would do, though, is perhaps at the very end, of course, delete this one. And then you just want to scrub through it and test it, right? Before you do any more work or save it and such, play it a few times, uh, scrub through it frame by frame to make sure there isn't too much, uh, too much uh, problematic content. There's a, quite a bit of flicker here. And again, that's because when we use the stroke player approach, uh, we had a short brush stroke and we were spreading it over a lot more frames in the stroke player when we went through the entire animation. So that was not a very smart decision, but you know what, it's not always bad. One thing we could do with that is just like blur it away with the Mystic Vision and um, you know, to, to uh, amplify it, to show that, uh, I'm gonna go to the blur, uh, just on a single one, you could do the Mystic Vision and uh, place it somewhere where the star is uh, exploding and uh, and adjust the quality and the factor and then so that's going to add a little bit of additional pizzazz as well now i'm actually going to need to do that across the entire animation uh, so again that calls for the timeline let's go to the timeline and look under the blur group uh, we already split them here between mystic vision and dark vision i like the dark vision for this because the dark vision is going to look like we're casting shadows now, before we do that, we may want to have the bright parts uh, expand a little bit into the, the darker parts. So let's do the light diffusion so that if there's any light parts, they kind of take take control and expand into the, the darker areas. That would be uh, the photographic group. Uh, in the photographic group of filters, let's use the light diffusion. Um, there's other things you might want to do here, you know, to expand and blur the, the dark flickers or whatnot. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of techniques here from blurring to motion blur to zoom blur to, um, what's the other one? The uh, soft contrast improvement. Um, we've seen those in other tutorials as well. So <laughs> one thing I'll, I'll do once this one is completed, I'll now switch over to the mystic vision, the dark vision to see if we can get some sort of a, a shadow cast. And sure enough, if we place it around here and look for a place where there's a lot of bright parts and we see some new dark uh, meteors like this one here, uh, as, you, as you increase the quality and especially the factor, you can see, oh yeah, there it is. You can see sort of a, a dark shadow cast and that, that's going to make it nicely look like a bit like a volumetric. It's not really volumetric, of course, but it, it may give you enough of that feel that uh, you, can, you can definitely use that as well to, to convey a little bit more of a uh, movement. And it's really particularly useful if you are, uh, if you're going to make this a static image, a still image. Let me apply that to the entire animation. And again, to the point, this is this is one place where you can also really see the value of using the Howler edition of Dog Waffle. Even if you're not going to do an animation in the end, even if your work that you're, you're working on is supposed to be a still image. Let me see if I can increase the dynamic range a little bit <clears throat> to make it brighter where it can be brighter. Um, even if you, you, uh, you really are looking for just one perfect image, um, there it is, I cleaned that too early. Okay, so I have, I'm looking for one perfect image, and the thing is, I got 180 to choose from now, right? Because I did this as an animation, and I know I'm only, maybe I'm doing just a single static view, and I'm looking for one view, like this one, right? To then bring the spaceship right in front of it, and say, click it down once. Oh, no, not with the random angle, that's no good. So let's undo that. Uh, let's say there's no need for speed scale. We need a reset button, all that. Do we have a reset? I don't think we do. Um, so we'll just go to, oh yeah, well, you know what? No, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll just do this manually click. Let's see here. Okay, speed scale zero, step, doesn't matter. Opacity size, let's go full. Uh, but the, the thing that does matter is random position. We shouldn't have any... Oh, it's the angle, the rotation. Let's just disable the transform. There you go. I think that should take care of it. There you go. So now we have our spaceship, and this is the final view we're looking for, right? Maybe we're looking for just a static image. But uh, the beauty of it is that we had a lot more to choose from for the background. 
right, let, me, let me go back to this image here and undo the spaceship. There it is. Um, you, you have a bunch of these to choose from now because we used the animation to just really create a lot of different scenes. And that's the thing about it, is that animation gives you so much so much more than just static image. If you if you try this and then you didn't like it as a single state single image, you'd have to go all over. Here you have a lot of different choices you can uh, choose from, and select uh, for instance something like this here, and then say okay, let's bring the spaceship in, and perhaps uh, turn it around a little bit, or let's see if we can do that. Uh, I mean, we can we can do that in a couple of places. You know, of course in the um, in the brush keyframe, that's another place where you can do it. Right? You can you can rotate it around here to give it a slightly different look. But um, what you might want to do is perhaps do that if you have it right here. You can adjust uh, the angle a little bit. There you go. And nope, that was too much. Let's go back the other way. And remember, this is not a single image. No, actually, this one is. I think this one is not a film strip. Yeah, this one is one where I only grabbed one image, so it's a little bit more responsive, a little bit faster. When you resale, rescale it, or if you if you rotate it, it's uh, it's doing a transform on just this one frame, so it's a little bit faster. So that's cool. Uh, so now we have perhaps this angle, and we might want to make it a, little, a slight little bit bigger. There you go. And I still need still the wrong angle. I like to have it dive into it a little bit more. Yeah, All right, isn't that it? Okay, something like this. And then, of course, that also calls for jet flares, uh, jet engine flares. So I'm going to finish it with that now. Forget the animation, right? I mean, <laughs> I did the animation. Uh, we learned how to do that, and maybe that's the the uh, the mother of all animations. But um, what I'll do is now focus on the engine exhaust here, the light blue part. Right, this that was rendered as part of the Carrara render, and but I'd like to just add one to that. And that could be a case for perhaps, uh, let me go free the animation. Oh, you know what? No, let's go save it first. Nah, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> we know we can redo this in a few minutes. Um, let's go uh, free the animation, okay? Because all we need now is just this one image and I'm going to uh, focus on adding the, um, where is it, in the browse media I have a animated uh, exhaust, uh, jet fire there. And so when I preview that, you can see it here, um, it's not at the right uh, angle, so I need to, uh, let's probably want to store it here, store and manage, and where did it go? Where did it go? Store. Oh, no, that's not it. Store and manage a copy. There it is. Oh, it went over there. Lower right corner. There it is. And so what I'll do is I'll rotate it. Um, uh, this one's an animated one also. Um, so that's going to take a little bit longer, of course. And what I shall do... There you go, that might be better on the angle. Perhaps even a little bit more. Or is that too much? No, that's good, that's a good angle. Um, so we, oh, I minimized it, good, I didn't lose it. So there it is. Uh, now I need to make it fully opaque, where it is opaque, and it will still be transparent with, oh, but it needs, it's in a replace mode, and you need this, I need this to be in additive mode. So let's go additive, there you go. No, that's not additive, it didn't take it. Yes, it did. Oh, well, maybe it's not showing it in the preview. There you go. All right. Uh, now, when you have the engine, and maybe there's actually uh, both engines are on here. There, this one, and this one is partly showing too. So, or maybe a little bit more. There you go. So you have the engines on, and um, what we need to do next is to add a little bit of lens flare to that because you know this is blinding bright. Uh, now there's actually a couple of different things. Let's do the lens flares first. Post work, uh, len um, yeah, lens flare. And um, I don't know which one we want. This is reddish. Let's take one of the reddish ones here with the flare options, and then just put put it right on here and here and here. 
just a tad, that touch. And, and then there is another thing too. Uh, there are a couple of filters uh, for stylizing, uh, like glowing, glowing edge. No, not glowing edges. I would probably go something like artistic. Um, I don't know, this or transforms video. There's, there's some, there are some uh, effects that might be really useful here. Uh, some starry. I don't know, I keep forgetting where they are, but there's there's some other photographic effects, maybe. Star filter, that might be the one. Let's apply that. Yeah, you see how it's it's like the, the parts that are bright will kind of start glowing. And so that could be a way, and then of course another one in the uh, photographic collection is the soft contrast improvement and that that sometimes also adds a lot of value to, to the color choices there and then of course another one is photographic filter light diffusion um, all sorts of uh, reasons to use that at times Maybe, uh, precise render there you go and so that completes this quick demo well not so quick I understand <laughs> uh, a lot to explore uh, thanks for watching and have fun waffling and howling